So what did Kasparov play then to this uh, f5? Well, he played the strongest move, according to Ribka. Just check. Queen g5 check. So the king's only got two moves. Karpov played king h8. But what if he played king h7? Well, here, now taking on f5 is crushing. There's no tempo loss, because it's with check. And after queen g4, here, there's queen g5. And now this other rook can come in for the kill, for the mating net. So there's no escape, really. Queen e5, and then don't it'll be mate. So basically, it's taking the pawn with check, not allowing this knight e6 resource. So king h8 was played, but still check. And after king g8, now rook takes f5. And the position is slightly different. Why, why you wonder there is no knight e6? Let's have a quick look at knight e6 now. There's rook h5. And there's no f6 resource. Kasparov has still stopped Karpov from playing f6. So the brutal threat of rook h8 mating. Now let's look at knight g7. There's just rook g5 here. And then Karpov would be forced with queen e5. Ridiculous computer move. <laughs> so if he wanted to stave off mate. So basically this is, is crushing. There's nothing here. So after check, king g8, G rook takes f5. Karpov actually played knight e4. So, what's going on here? Why, why isn't there a rook h5 now? If rook h5 now, there's knight takes f6, winning the queen. So the queen has to move. Gasparov still got it under control, though. He plays just queen h4. And when I first looked at this guy, I thought, hang on. Did, did Kasparov... What's Kasparov's tactic that sound? What's going on here now? Okay, but the knight is in pre. Why it's still got a big threat of rook h5. There's also now the, the immediate threat of queen g4 check. King moves, rook h5, mate. Um, so let's have a look. Karpov in the game played rook e8. What if he plays f6? If he plays f6, then now, instead of actually rook h5, Ribka's given actually queen takes e4 with a big advantage. Uh, so he's just two pawns up here, actually. Five pawns versus three. If he tries to mate Karpov, I'm not sure this works. The strongest move given is, is actually knight g5. And it's a bit unclear now, because this this is not totally mating, because the knight's protecting h7, as you'll see. Um, queen h6 is not mate. There's king f7. So the, the king's quite tricky to mate. So basically, just... In this position, the strongest is actually just to take on e4, believe it or not. So, what um, Karpov played... After, sorry, Kasparov played... Um, in the game, sorry, queen h4... So we're saying rook h5 doesn't quite work. Karpov played rook e8. Kasparov... He can't take the knight. He, he plays in for this rook h5 now. And in this position, it's still busted for black. Um, now, this, this major threat of, of rook h8 is mating, because king g7, queen h6 is mate. So, Karpov played f5, and I think resigned with this move, or ran out of time. Um, but it is resignable now, because check is devastating. Because here, queen h7, king f6, queen h6 again. Now say king e5. In this position, f4 check, king moves, rook d1. And this is where it starts to get very tricky for black. If king c5, check, now check on c6, and now rook takes e8. <laughs> so how much of this had, had Gasparov seen? Uh, it's remarkable, isn't it, really, this king chase, but it, but it is winning that rook on e8, that poor rook. <laughs> in, in, that's just an example variation. Now, I'm a bit confused myself, actually, in, in what I said here. Knight e4, queen, queen h4. What had we said here as a defense? So f6, ah, yes. 
So this supports knight g5 if given enough time. So not, not rook h5 here because of knight g5. So but in the game Karpov had protected the knight with rook e8. So he changed the tactical scenery again where rook h8 is actually effective. So it's amazing isn't it? These, these subtle changes of position if f6 has been played or not, one move earlier or later is absolutely key for white winning or not. But uh, it's, it's staggering to think if, if Kasparov did you know, see his winning uh, continuations and all these different variations. There's a little bit of a labyrinth going on here. So uh, great respect to him that um, f5 is still winning for white. Um, is, there, is there any real escape plans here? So say king e7 instead. There's just rook h7, apparently, and now rook d1, and here, queen c6. So it seems queen c6 is a common key to, to finishing black off here, because there's no defense here for black. Because um, rook c7 is losing that rook again on e8 uh, with a big disadvantage. So say rook c7, and then losing the queen here. So let's go back. Um, so check if the king has to go to e5. So apparently st strong is um, f4, but maybe even um, rook d1 is even stronger with the threat, the threat actually of f4 mate. Maybe I should have left this longer, sorry about that guys. But f4 might not be the most accurate. Rook d1, so f4 is the threat. So say knight f6 now. Queen e3. And here, actually, f4 is not being threatened mate now because the queen's not cutting off the king. But rook h6 to threaten f4. Now, if f4 for black, queen b3, so there's a threat of rook d5 mating. So, say black tries to defend d5. That's ridiculous moving up the queen. Say rook d8, there's queen e6. So, there's no actual defense, I believe, here on d5. There's no, there's no adequate defense to stop being mated now on d5 without giving up the queen. So this is even more accurate, perhaps, than the, the variation I showed you before. So it just shows that um, although the black king could run, it couldn't hide from white's major attack now. So either rook d1 or, or f4 is, is still winning for white in this position. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's a great, um, great to see these guys again, um, reliving one of their older blitz matches. And a nice victory for Kasparov, very dynamic. Um, giving up his nice state pawn and still this nagging ed edge, a move which the computers miss. Knight f6 with devastating consequences for the black king. So um, the, the attack becomes irresistible here. It seems in all variations, even in this variation. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.